Okay, so today we're going to talk about the new GP63 Leopard 8RE gaming laptop from MSI. I'm going to do a full review on this unit. We're going to talk about gaming, temps, sound levels. I'm even going to show you how to upgrade this machine. So stick around if you guys are interested in this particular laptop because I will be covering everything. And if you do have questions along the way, do not hesitate to leave a comment down below because I will be replying to all comments. So let's go ahead and do an unboxing and take a look at the device. Pop it open with our trusty knife here. And once we open it up, we find another box, but this time we find a black one. All right, open that up. Okay, as you can see, they're not too interested in the unboxing experience, but they do have a little poster here that says if you need any help, you should contact them. They have a quick start guide. In this guide, you'll find uh, button layouts, where to go if you need help, and also a little warranty summary. Within the quick start guide, if you're not sure which keys do what, or how to activate a particular setting on your laptop, you can take a look there to see if uh, there's a way to do it. There's also a specific section for F keys. One of the things I was really disappointed with was the charger. Basically, it's an ugly, basic looking charger. You know, it's gonna work. It's a 65 watt charger, and uh, the fact that it looks a little ugly kinda sucks, because the gaming laptop itself looks really awesome. And then they give you this ugly charger. It's like, why? Why are they still doing this? So many companies have changed their chargers now. All right, let's take the styrofoam off, take the laptop out, take the protective screen cover off. And there it is, our awesome MSI gaming laptop. Let's open up this machine, take a look. Wow, what an amazing piece of hardware. Let's examine the branding. So it says Leopard on the back side. We have a little MSI logo with the MSI Gamer Shield on there. Pretty cool looking. Red accents. It's really common to find red accents on gaming laptops. Not sure what the deal is with that, but at least it looks nice here. We also have an all metal design on the exterior. Just kind of cool looking. One thing, however, that I did notice is that it's kind of a combination of plastic and metal that comes together. Like the bottom portion there is plastic. What kind of ports do we have? Well, we have a standard SD card slot. We have two USB ports, 3.0. We have a power plug and two vents on each side for a total of four vents. And then on the very back side, we don't really have a whole lot. It's just kind of plain looking. More vents. We have a Kensington lock. And then we have a Ethernet, HDMI, mini display port, USB 3.0. We have a USB type C connector and a headphone and microphone jack. At first I thought the gaming on this machine was kind of a mixed bag because I noticed that there was current power limit throttling and thermal throttling on the machine. See how I'm getting only 30 frames a second? Watch as that creeps up to about 60 frames. And once the machine knows that you're gaming, it actually optimizes the performance and gives you more power. That way when you're gaming, you have enough frames and the device knows what's going on. On games like Grand Theft Auto, and Rust, you can actually max the graphics out at 1080p and you shouldn't have to worry at all. But remember, the system takes a good couple minutes to warm up sometimes. Here I'm playing some Grand Theft Auto, shooting at some cops, I got the first person mode enabled. It's really awesome that this game has first person, I can love that. So because this machine is a 6 core, it's got 16 gigabyte RAM and a GTX 1060. It's really, really good performance. You could probably almost get the same performance with eight gigs, but the thing is there's actually some games now that require more than eight gigabytes of RAM. So because this machine has 16 gigs, you essentially have a machine that's future-proofed. Games like Overwatch are games that are very optimal for any issues at all, Particularly because it runs one of the higher end demanding games like Rust. If it can run that game, it can run pretty much anything. 
let's learn how to upgrade our machine. We're also going to go over each of the components inside this machine in a little bit more greater detail. The first thing I noticed that I didn't like is the plasticky feel on the back. It's very flimsy and very weak. If you drop this machine, it's going to crack and it's going to break right away. To get this machine opened, I use an iFixit kit. This kit includes pretty much everything you need to fix or take apart any type of device, which is why I really, really like it. So take out the uh, screws and don't forget to remove the factory seal and take out the screw there because I didn't know there was a screw in there when I tried to open it up, I almost broke the plastic right off. So don't forget there's a screw under there. So for our first item here, we're looking at the heat pipes where the NVIDIA processor connects to the heat sink and the fan. Next to that, we also have the Intel processor. You can tell that it's the Intel one because it has four screws holding the heat sink together as opposed to three like the NVIDIA one. I'm actually surprised the machine looks really nice once you take it apart. You're gonna see that it has four ventilation systems to keep it cool. Up close, we see the triangular heat sink design of the uh, Intel product, which is kind of odd. Some people have been saying that's a really bad idea online. For whatever reason, the Intel processor requires only three heat pipes and shares one of those pipes, and the NVIDIA one requires about four and shares one of them as well. Here we have a HGST HDD. This thing's kind of slow, but at least it's not 5400 RPM. This one's actually 7200 RPM. I'm gonna show you how to upgrade it. We also have some Samsung RAM. That RAM is 2400 MHz DDR4. And then we have a M2 drive. This drive is also a Samsung drive and it's actually quite fast, 400 megabytes read and write. We have some speakers at the very bottom here. They kind of have a Star Wars-ish kind of look to them. Kind of interesting. Unfortunately, the speakers aren't very good on this machine. And then we have a 54 watt battery. That's your Wi-Fi card. And then that is the uh, chipset that basically tells the computer how to run the CPU and it interlinks everything together. Here's a closer look at the actual RAM sticks. It's uh, two eight gigabyte sticks. I'm gonna show you how to remove those. So there's little metallic pins that you have to pull to the side and the stick of RAM is just gonna kind of prop up diagonally and then you pull it out. When you pull it out or when you're inserting new RAM, make sure that the notches align or you won't be able to put the RAM in properly. If the notch isn't aligned, you're gonna risk breaking the RAM. So if you're trying to put it in and you see how it's not going in? Flip the RAM over and then you should be able to insert it. And then just push it down once it's inserted. To take out the M2 drive, you have to first remove a screw and then it should prop up diagonally, very similar to how the RAM goes in and then you just pull it out. That particular one actually is stickered to the motherboard, so it's really hard to remove. I'm gonna show you how to install a very fast NVMe drive. This one here has about two gigs read and write. So there's a PCIe slot that you're gonna to wanna to insert it into. Remove the screw, insert it diagonally, and then push it down, and then put the screw to fasten the uh, drive in. I'm actually surprised that those use screws and they don't just use like a little metal pin kind of like the RAM. It's really kind of odd that they don't use that. I think that they should really use a lot less screws in this in the overall system to make it easier to manage. The HDD has a bracket that holds it together with two screws. Once you remove those two screws, you can then access the HDD. You just kind of pull it out, but remember, once you pull out the HDD, you then have to actually physically remove the bracket as well. And the bracket has uh, two screws holding the bracket itself together. And, you know, I think you actually don't need the bracket at all. Just insert the drive without the bracket. The bracket will provide some stability, but oftentimes the brackets are not really necessary.
Next up, we're going to examine the hinge of the laptop. So when you're opening up the screen and closing it, these hinges actually have a finite life, which means that you can only open up the laptop a certain amount of times. So I'm going to open it up a couple of times and see how fluid it is. The, the thing that makes me worried most is that the hinge feels very flimsy and very weak. Also, you have to hold the laptop down when you're opening it up. You can't open it up with one finger. So the screen is a highlight to the device. One of the things I really like about the screen is that it's anti-glare. So it's a matte finish, which means you're going to have literally almost no glare. Millisecond response time is three milliseconds, which is really good for gamers. And the screen itself is 120 hertz, which is absolutely amazing. So even though the laptop is made from plastic, it does have an area to rest your palms that's metallic. And then the back cover of the screen is also metallic. Let's examine in greater detail the thermal throttling and power limit throttling. So here we have the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility opened up and you could see that the first 15 minutes of the game has quite a bit of power limit throttling. And then you also get some thermal throttling. And once the fan ramps up and if you activate the extra fan speed button, that'll actually engage the fans to be max RPMs. And once you have that activated, it actually prevents any kind of thermal throttling or power limit throttling from happening. It's some kind of hardware tweak that they enabled. The thermal throttling will start to happen at around 90 Celsius. As you can see, it's no longer happening once I pushed max fan speed button. So I'll show you what the max fan speed button looks like. So you have two buttons. One opens up the gaming center and then the other one is the max speed fan button. I would say you should really only push this if you're having bad performance. But if you do run into scenarios where your laptop isn't performing like it should, push that button to ensure that it properly gets cooled. Let's examine the specifications in greater detail. We have CPU-Z opened up, we have GPU-Z, Task Manager, and a few other things. So within the CPU-Z, you'll see that it's the 8750H. That's the uh, introductory six core processor. So the six core processor for productivity users and multitaskers is gonna be absolutely amazing because it's 40% faster than the previous editions. This is really good news. When it comes to thermals, the area where you rest your palms is fairly cool. It's about 27 Celsius. The keyboard gets to about 30 Celsius, which is kind of high. And then the upper portions of the keyboard approach 40 Celsius. So because this system is fairly thin and light, they also made it more affordable. So the fans are actually a lot louder. This is one area that they kind of skimped out on. These fans are much louder than the Alienware fans that I've encountered. Probably the, this is the loudest machine I've ever encountered in general. Getting about 45 decibels. And then when you enable the turbo fan, it's about 54, 55, sometimes 57 decibels. It does get pretty loud. So I recommend wearing headphones. All right, let's talk about what makes this laptop really, really good. So first off, it's extremely light and it's probably the lightest gaming laptop that you're going to be able to get and it's got really good performance for the price like that's just something you can't beat for 1500 us dollars you can't beat a laptop with a 1060 six core processor and 16 gigabytes of ram that is just absolutely amazing and again the fact that it's light makes it even better the other thing i really like about the laptop is that it has a 120 hertz refresh rate screen with three millisecond response time which is a lot better than other gaming laptops if there's anything you can upgrade, get yourself extra SSD based storage. So either an M2 drive or a larger SATA drive that, and uh, take a look at how to upgrade it as well. If you haven't already, I actually show like a detailed guide in the video of how to do that. So definitely do that. Do not use the HDDs. Uh, the, the included one terabyte drive is 7,200 RPM, which is nice, but Trust me, it's time to move on from HDDs. Just get yourself a solid state and you'll be running the machine a lot faster. But the things that I don't like about it are overall it's build quality. So even though they decided to make it you know, light and portable, the build quality does suffer on this device quite a bit. So the first time I opened up this device, 
I almost completely broke it because the, the plastic that goes on the back here is really, really fragile and very easy to break. And when I took it off and, re and reapplied it back onto the backside here, um, it's no longer flush with the chassis. And I mean, it's not like I'm a noob or anything. I followed the directions, I took the screws out, I was careful, but I almost even missed a screw because there was a, a like a warranty sticker on here and I didn't understand why that was there. I wasn't sure like what it meant. But anyway, I took it off, took the screw out, and I was able to finally get the, the plastic shell off of the device. But because I opened it up and looked inside to see what kind of upgrades were available, it's now no longer flush with the chassis and I really, really don't like that. What I suggest they do is just get away from the plastic. I know that it's light, but just get away from it and use either some kind of metal, aluminum or something to enclose the computer because metal just feels nicer in the hand. It feels more premium and if MSI can do that, their devices are gonna be just that much better. Um, I would like it to be a little bit thinner, but for the $1,500 price tag, what you're really getting is just specs and lightweight capability. Other than that, the machine performs really, really well. When uh, doing gaming tests on it, it ran all my games, max graphics, 1080p, not a problem. The 1060 has six gigabytes of VRAM, so that's gonna be more than any game will require at 1080p, so that's really, really good news. All right, so I wanted to thank you guys for watching this far. And I wanted to ask you, do you have any suggestions on how I can make these videos better? I am trying to enhance the quality and the overall content and information that I'm providing in these videos. So if you have any ideas, uh, definitely don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. And if you like the video, I highly encourage you to subscribe because you are the type of person that likes these types of videos and I like making them. So definitely think you should subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. All right, take care. Bye.